Hello everyone, I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna. And we're, we're the, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Math, Math guys. guys. This video is part of our Monster Hunter Meta series, covering the mathematically optimal builds for different weapons in Monster Hunter World. In this video, we'll be covering bow. Also, there are a few different meta builds, so we'll be explaining each. We'll also be explaining why one is better than the other in a certain situation. Also, quick disclaimer, we will be referring to EFR, effective elements, and hit zone values a lot in these videos. If you do not know what those are, I heavily recommend you look at the videos we have linked in the top right covering them. And we will be including the standard raw attack buffs mentioned in the EFR video in the builds for this video. On top of all that, we'll be including each bow's best coding, be that power or close range, and give you the EFR of those as well. Alright, so these builds are going to be for patch 5.1. We do know that the Xenogama and Zoragama sets have been leaked. However, neither of them are efficient enough to change these builds. So at least for the current moment, these builds will be sticking around as the meta options. Alright, so bow, the truest definition of a glass cannon. It gets hit like a truck, but hits like a bigger truck filled with pissed off bears. And we all know how much Jinx loves getting... punished. Yes! <clears throat> Fuck! Just like that. Shit! Fuck! No! More. Yeppers. 450 damage per dash dance on average is just an obscene amount of damage for how mobile bow is. Now as we mentioned in our elemental damage video, a lot of bow damage comes from element, so elemental damage matching is very important if you want to deal high damage. This is why, in order to make things easier for you guys, we are going to list which monsters to use that particular element against after each of their respective builds. There's a few things that every bow build is going to need. Crit element for the elemental damage boost, Constitution for stamina management, weakness exploit, elemental attack up for the element that you're using, mighty bow for an extra charge, and spread and normal shot up for extra damage. Finally, we throw in as much crit eye as we can because it increases both our EFE and EFR. And if we have any level 2 slots left, we throw in some crit boost. Now these are listed roughly in the order of DPS gain per skill. And as crit boost does not add that much, it is at the bottom of the priority list. Dragon Piercer. And no, there will not be a Dragon Piercer build in this video. Dragon Piercer is significantly weaker than Elemental Bow in terms of damage and safety, even in its best matchups, so it doesn't really have a place in this video on the highest damage builds. So let's start off with Ice Bow. Ice Bow is nice because there is only one best build at the moment, which uses the Legiana Snow Fletcher Bow. The KT Stream Bow doesn't actually get power coatings. It's unfortunate, but we'll probably be using Legiana for a while. At 347.29 EFR and 67.07 EFE, this bow hits very hard against Ice Weak monsters. This bow caps at 4 levels of Ice Attack, and the 4th Ice Attack deco in this build does only give it 20 more Ice Attack but there's really nothing else to slot in for a level 1 slot that would give you more return on investment. The monsters that this build works best on are both Diablos, Luna, Naked Katie, Odegaron, and the Subway Flasher. Next up, we have Water Bow. So the Water Bow right now that is the meta choice is the KT Water Bow. Despite not having power coding, this bow just wins outright because of its stats alone. This bow hits 361.38 EFR and 64.39 EFE. And this is where we come to the catch. The bow does need free element because the element is hidden. This is also one of the cases where the 4th level of elemental attack is only worth 20 element. However, it is just barely better than slotting in another crit eye deco in this case. But if you prefer a higher crit for more consistency, then you can go ahead and switch them out. Now, if you didn't get the Water Bow from Katie, then your next best option is the Proud Bow build. To be honest, the stat gain isn't even that big on the Katie Water, and the builds look mostly the same. But math is math. This build hits 355.42 EFR and 60.98 EFE. That means that the EFR is only 5.96 lower, and the EFE is only 3.14 lower as well. This works out to about 1.6% increase in EFR and a 5.6% increase in EFE. So basically a very marginal difference. The monsters you'll use Water Bow against are T-Rex, Toaster, Roly Poly, Behemoth if you're aiming at the head or tail, Great Gyros, Lava Shit, and Electric Squirrel. Next up we have some real firepower, the Fire Bows. 
puns aside, the fire bows in the game do have just stupidly high stats. This Anjanath bow build hits 430.22 EFR and 65.28 EFE. Which again, is just so stupidly high. Also, fire bows aren't quite like the water bows. The KT version is less of an upgrade than a side grade. Exactly. The KT Firebow build hits 438.68 EFR and 61.78 EFE with Agitator active. Generally speaking, the Andra Bow barely wins out due to the higher EFE over the Firebow. But the Firebow does hit much higher affinity, which means it is more consistent when it comes to crit. And for a heathen like Jinx who refuses to pray to our lord RN Jesus, that can mean a lot. Look, just because I've gotten only 5 attack decos in a thousand hours, and it took me 200 KT horn breaks just to get one glutton, and just because I averaged 2-3 to three spare shots in a cluster run does not mean I have to join your bullshit religion. Whatever you say, heretic. It's just a random number generator, Jinx. It's all math and lines of code. There's no such thing as RN Jesus. There's no such thing as RN Jesus. There's no such thing as RN Jesus. The monsters you'll use the Firebow against are My Little Pony, Spooky Breath, Baby Alien, Hammerhead, Sky Rat, and Fat Boy. And yes, we know Xeno is only two star weak to all elements, but there's two reasons you want to use fire. His hit zone values actually change depending on whether or not he's in a critical state. Fire and Dragon are the strongest against him when he's not, which is the majority of the fight. But most importantly, the Fire Bow is just stupid good. Next up we have the Dragon Bows. So first up, to clear up something that seems to be a common misconception. Elder Dragons are not weak to dragon damage. Our guess is that Elder Dragons take low dragon damage as a balancing mechanic to Elder Seal existing. With the exception of Luna, Katie, and Behemoth, the Elder Dragons are very resistant to dragon damage. For Luna and Katie, there are much better elements as we've covered. And yes, you do not want to use Dragon Bow against Val. All of its breakable body parts take zero dragon damage until they break. And these are the parts that, well, you shoot at. This means that for a good chunk of the fight, you are dealing a lot less damage. And Val is always very weak to fire damage, and the fire bows just have dumb stats. Alright, so let's start with the KT Queen Bow. This is the only R7 KT bow that is meta, and with Agitator active, it hits 400.99 EFR and 57 EFE on the dot. Free element, of course, as this is a hidden element bow. This bow is an easier drop to get than the R8 KT bows, and has been playing a tug of war with the Valhazak bow ever since KT first dropped for the title of best dragon bow. So, the Valhazak bow hits 449.72 EFR and 46.64 EFE. This puts it at 48.73 more EFR and 10.36 less EFE. These stat differences actually level out almost perfectly on most matchups. So it's extremely matchup dependent which one will win, and the difference will be at most 1 to 2 damage per arrow. So honestly, you just use whichever one you want. Also, it turns out that the Valhazak bow is the only meta bow set to gain something from the Zoragama armor that was leaked. This build basically trades one attack boost for a crit boost which pops the EFR up to 460.16. This is not a huge gain to be honest, but it is an improvement, and I guess two free levels of Bombardier is nice too. The monsters you want to use Dragon Bow against are both varieties of Rathian and Rathalos, Devil Joe, Radabon, and Uragon if you can't use water. Also, Dragon is the best against Behemoth's arms if you do not want to draw enmity by aiming at his head. And yes, we did not list the Dragon Bone Bow. Because the Dragon Bow doesn't have a power coating, we view it as situational at best. To make up for the damage difference, you would have had to have run out of power coating for a long time. Most monsters will die way before that, and you can always go restock. As for Devil Joe, it only beats the other Dragon Bows if you use Affinity Booster, which is even more situational. Finally, we have the Thunder Bows. So the KT Thunder Bow is by far the strongest Thunder Bow in the game and hits 428.63 EFR and 60.49 EFE. This bow is by far the biggest damage increase that KT gave us for bow. It has 28% more EFE than the next best bow, which is a significant damage increase. Speaking of the next best bow, that would be the Tobi Kodachi Bow. This build hits 419.46 EFR and 47.25 EFE. Now it does depend on matchup, but this bow will deal roughly 10% less damage compared to the KT Thunderbow. 
Now, I'm not saying Aaron Jesus exists, and I'm not saying that you should worship or pray to him. However, if you happen to subscribe to that particular belief system, and you would like to sacrifice a goat in order to get a specific KT weapon, this would be the one you would aim for on bow. The monsters that work best with the Thunderbow are Bagel, Devil Joe if you have the KD Thunderbow, Dodogama, Kuluyaku, Clothed KD, Kushala, Legiana, Puki, Tsitsiyaku, and finally Nergigante. Now we know that a lot of builds that we're showing are using KD weapons. We understand that not everybody has them, but unfortunately a lot of power creep happened during KD. If you're looking to farm her a little more effectively, check the link in the top right. Now, of course these builds assume you have the decos available to make them. However, if you are missing some, you can use the set builder at honeyhunterworld.com to figure out what the highest EFR set you can make with your own decoration limitations. Alright everyone, that about does it for this video guys. Equipped with these builds, you will now be dealing max deeps. I'd like to give a quick shout out to 2D over at the Monster Hunter Gathering Hall. While I was busy making all of the melee meta Hemoth sets when Behemoth first came out, 2D went ahead and made these bow builds before I even had a chance to. He's an amazing optimizer. And if you'd like to up your bow game by watching some amazing speedrunners, then definitely check out SSH, Mugame, Fei, Fermero, Aroha, and Extros. Links to where you can find them as well as the builds from this video will be in the description. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. We'll have new videos coming out soon on the other weapons, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when those come out. As always, if you have any questions or need clarifications, leave a comment. And if you want your friends to join in on dealing max deeps, be sure to share this video with them. Happy hunting, hunters! Tuna and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Bye.